Hi everyone, it's Suzanne Kohlberg and today I just wanted to talk about why most diets fail and what to do instead and just use this framework as a bit of a reference to refer to before buying any weight loss course, before starting the next weight loss program, before doing the next thing to address your weight, including mine because I have a program that I sell um, and I really want people to be really clear on what they're getting themselves in for and what's required for lasting sustainable weight loss. So um, a bit about my personal story, you can see more on my website, my Facebook page, but I've been a lifelong dieter, a recovered one now, but a lifelong dieter. And I went on my first diet age four and between the age of four and 30, I lost and regained in excess of 500 kilograms. I don't actually know the number, but it was a lot. And I've lost big numbers before, like in 2006, seven, I dropped 43 kilos. I need to gain it all back with interest. In 2011 12, 60 kilograms to gain it all back with interest. So I know what it's like. And I'm recording this at the end of 2019. And it's that time of the year where we are being bombarded with new year, new you, drop weight for good, you know, do this thing. And I know for me in the past, this has been a time of the year where I just chuck everything at it and I want to change everything. And there's some energy about the new year and refreshing and exciting. And, and I really don't want people to set themselves up for failure because often we really we overestimate how much we can do in a couple of days or weeks and we underestimate how much we can do in a year. And when we don't get results fast enough or when we have a little slip up, we tend to throw the whole thing out and just go, oh, start again Monday. So if that's been you, I just want you to have a look at this presentation. I've got a little visual that I'm gonna share, hopefully, <laughs> and, and see why this hasn't worked for you and what to consider before taking the next steps. So I'll attempt to share the screen now and we'll see how we go. So, da, 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 thanks for bearing with me. Okay, so this is the pleasure pain map and I give concept credit to Kylie Bryan, one of my mentors, um, because she taught this to me. And it really explains why so many of us get stuck in this cycle of lose weight, gain weight, you know, start again Monday, and more importantly, how to overcome it and why most diets don't work and how it's not your fault. So a lot of us feel external pleasure, as in we do these things that give us external pleasure. So in the time that we're doing them. So in the moment that you're overeating, binge eating, having takeaway food, drinking too much, like watching Netflix, binge watching Netflix. I'm not saying Netflix is bad, but like a whole season, um, avoiding these avoidance behaviours. In the moment that we're doing them, they feel really good. <laughs> they, the result of them isn't good. And I struggled with this for decades and I'm so grateful that I found the mindset work and got my way out of it. But you know, this for a lot of us is our current reality. We're in this external pleasure phase. And external pleasure results in internal pain. So when we overeat, when we don't exercise, when we have junk food and too much alcohol and stuff, we have these things, we gain weight, we have low energy, we have sleep troubles because we're not having nourishing food, pain. Like I, at my heaviest was, well, the scale said 150 kilos, but that's all they weighed to. So it could have well be more than that. But I had a lot of pain, especially back pain and knee pain because of carrying around that much weight. Stress, hormonal imbalances and all the excuses. Like they feel like reasons, but when you really call yourself on them, they're excuses. I'm tired. I don't have enough time. I'm busy. It's too hot. It's too cold and so on and so forth. And this really results in this negative self-talk. I can't do it. I'm a failure. I've tried everything it works for others, not for me. And then we have this low mood and this fear and this anger, and we can feel quite um, isolated because we, we try and reach out for help and people go, oh, just eat less. Or have you tried this? Or have you done that? And they try to be helpful, but we, we don't really feel heard or understood. Um, that isolation and can lead to guilt and shame and embarrassment. So it looks like this negative feedback loop. And it's summed up perfectly. If you've seen Austin Powers, this character here, his name is Fat Bastard. I'm not calling him that. That's the character's name. And he says, I eat because I'm unhappy and I'm unhappy because I eat. So, you know, we overeat. Um, and in the moment that we overeat, we feel okay or good or numb or, or shoving our problems down. But we have that instant gratification hit from eating. But over the long term, it results in the weight gain. And because we feel like the weight gain and the negative self-talk, then we overeat more and it becomes this loop. And the thing is, when we decide I'm never going to eat chocolate again or Tim Tams, that's my go-to, um, never going to have a Tim Tam, 
when I say no to a Tim Tam, I don't magically drop five kilos. But when I say yes, for that instant, for that few moments or minutes, I feel better. So that's why this loop can be so hard to break out of. So how have you tried to escape this loop in the past? Like, have a think about it. For many of us, we go to external pain. So we do regular exercise, we make healthy choices, we have portion control. I hate that term, portion control. Basically, we eat less, we do the meal planning, we do the moderate alcohol. Like, we do all these things that in the moment that we're doing them feel painful. I'm not saying they're bad because over the long term, they do result in, the, you know, the dropping the weight and the feeling better. But in the moment that you're doing them, when you'd rather be on the couch, eating chocolate, watching Netflix, going to exercise and not eating, you know, it feels painful in that moment. So we have what um, Kylie refers to as the pain triangle. And, and, and I say like traditional weight loss thing. We, we notice that we've gained weight. You know, we feel kind of crappy. So internally, inside, we have the negative self-talk and the guilt and the shame and the embarrassment. So we go from this internal pain to external pain, which is making healthy choices, portion control, regular exercise. And when you're going from pain to pain, it relies on a lot of willpower and motivation because when you're feeling fat, frumpy, annoyed, upset, and you're like, oh, now I have to go for a run, or I have to do CrossFit or even go for a walk or I have to eat kale or salad or whatever it is, you don't feel like doing it. So you, know, you really ramp up that willpower and that motivation. And then after a while, it can be anywhere from a couple of hours to a couple of days to a couple of months or maybe even a year, we just get to a point where we're like, oh, stuff it, you know, and we ride that stuff it train back over to external pleasure, hence it's a triangle. And sometimes it's only one little thing that sets us off. It's like, oh, or we have this little voice um, going, just one won't hurt, or you've been so good, or we'll start again tomorrow. So it can be a slippery slope down to the external pleasure, or can it just be like, oh, this hasn't worked. I'm not getting the results fast enough. I'll try again and, and chuck it in entirely. But when we go from pain to pain, it's really, really challenging. So you might be like, well, I get that, Suzanne. So how do I make this lasting change? Like, How do I do it? So let's just have a quick segue into what you dream of. Like what you really want is this internal pleasure where you're at a healthy weight and you have high energy and you sleep well and you go to bed early and you wake up refreshed and you're free of pain and, and you, know, you have this positive self-talk, I can do this, I'm a success and so on and so forth. You can read through the slide. So that's what you dream of and you know that when you do the external painful things, make the healthy choices, go to the gym, um, eat smaller portions, after a while, it results in that healthy weight. It's that delayed gratification. So it's this positive feedback loop. And you may have been there before. Like, as I said at the beginning, I've dropped 40 kilos, I've dropped 60 kilos. I know what it's like. You have these results and you're feeling really good, but it, it doesn't seem to last because eventually I got to the oh, stuff at point and rode that train back to external pleasure. But how do you stay here in this positive feedback loop? Because there are people who do it. There's the unicorns who have the weight loss success, the 1% or the 2% who try a diet and, and last. Or there's people who've never struggled with their weight, who just go to a restaurant, order a meal, eat a bit, go, eh, I'm full and leave it. I'm like, how do they do that? They don't ramp up their willpower. They don't have to cover their food in salt or sauce or, or ask someone to send it away or push it. You know, they just do it easily and effortlessly. How do I become one of those people? Do you know what I mean? So you want that, but you're currently here. You're overeating or emotional eating, you're skipping exercise, you're staying up late, you're watching too much Netflix, and that's resulting in you know more weight gain, lower energy. You know. So if we look at this as a whole, I don't know if this will work with my mouse on the presentation. So I'll just talk through it. Your current reality is you're indulging in the external pleasures, you have the internal pain, and you're in that instant gratification loop. Ideally, you want to be on the right side of the slide where you do the things, like you eat less and you move more and you know meal plan, and then you maintain the weight. So how do you traverse it? Because as we talked about, going from pain to pain, which is traditional triangle method, um, internal pain to external pain, eventually the willpower, the motivation dries up and you end up going back over to external pleasure. So what do we do instead? So we change the starting point. So, and we get really clear on where you are. So basically we're gonna go from internal pain to internal pleasure. And when I first say that, most people go, well, how? I'm not at a healthy weight. I don't have high energy. We look at the mindset. We look at the self-talk. We look at the emotions, those things that we can work with. 
because when we have the negative self-talk and the, the lower emotions, when we feel crappy, we do crappy things. Like internally pain goes to external pleasure. I'm feeling low, a bit of chocolate will pop me up, pop, pep me up, <laughs> or, or a Coke. A bit of sugar will help, help keep me going, you know. So how can we go from internal pain to internal pleasure? How can we start to speak to ourselves more positively? Now, I'm not saying that we have to sit around and sing Kumbaya. I'm not saying that we have to ignore our problems or the reality or whatever. But I'm just saying that we can start to be a little bit kinder to ourselves and, and a little bit kinder about the situation. So when something bad happens, instead of going, oh, I'm a fat failure, that's something I used to say to myself all the time, or I'm fat and I can't do this or whatever, so you eat too much. That was suboptimal. Move on straight away. That very moment, not the next day, not Monday, not next week. No, I've blown it now. I might as well eat everything. That was suboptimal. I ate too much. I, I'm feeling a bit sick or whatever. Move straight on. Like work on that self-talk. Talk to yourself like you would a friend. Like if you really get honest with the way you speak to yourself, you'd never speak to friends like that. So why do you speak to yourself? Like really call yourself on it. A little, a really quick little trick for this is to give yourself a, a character, like a cartoon voice and say it out loud. So as I said, I used to always say, I'm a fat failure. I do it like Mickey Mouse. You're probably going to laugh because it doesn't come out very well, but I'm a fat failure. <laughs> as soon as you say it like that, you laugh because it sounds ridiculous. And you know what? It is. So changing that self-talk to positive. It's like, hmm, that was suboptimal. How can I start again now? How can I move on now? Or what can I learn from this? Because it could be that, you know, I ate, I overate in the afternoon because I didn't have a big enough breakfast. Or I overate in the afternoon because I was really, really tired. And what I really should have said is, no, sorry, I can't do that. Like, learn from the mistakes rather than put ourselves down and end up in this cycle again. And the same with the feelings. Like, um, a feeling, how we feel in the moment, how we feel guilt, we feel shame, we feel embarrassed. How can we start to feel joy and happiness now? Because if you don't feel good now, you won't feel good when you've dropped the weight. As somebody who's dropped and gained a lot of weight a lot of times, all I used to do is push the goalpost back. Be like, oh, I need to lose more weight. Hasn't enough weight. Or I need to get toned, you know? And it's like, you can feel good. Whatever size, shape, whatever you've got going on, um, now, in the moment, and when you start to feel good, then you do good. It's so much easier to go from internal pleasure to external pain because when you feel good, it's easier to make the healthier choices. It's easier to check in, am I hungry, and eat the smaller portions. It's easier to move. And like when you feel good, it's like what kind of movement exercise do I want to do? Instead of like, oh, I'll do CrossFit or running because it's the biggest calorie burn. I actually can't stand running. I've dropped 78 kilos and I haven't run once. Um, what sort of things do you like to do? And when you feel good, you'll start to do them more often. So I really hope this has been helpful. If you've got any questions at all, just let me know. But I really want to encourage you, before you sign up for anything, before you join any program, um, I'll just stop the share here. A lot of them promise really exciting things. And they're like, you know, do this and drop a dress size in seven days. Or, you know, let me just hypnotize you or have this pill, powder, potion thing. You're giving your power away. You're giving your results to that thing. And then you're setting yourself up to always have to take that. Because they talk about like do this until you get to your goal and then we have this maintenance program. Has anyone ever actually done that? How you drop the weight is how you keep it off. So if you're relying on an external thing, something outside of you, then you're going to need that the whole time. And if you want to do that, great, more power to you. But go in knowing that it's not just going to be this many dollars until you've dropped the weight and then you can you know, go back. How you start is how you'll finish. So when you really work on your mindset and the way you speak to yourself, and the thoughts that you have going on, it does become, after a time, I'm not going to promise anything overnight, easy and effortless. And I'm, I'll get this quote from Denise Duffel Thomas, effortless as in less effort, not effort none. You know, I still have times where I overeat. I'm not broken. I don't need fixing. It's just a sign that maybe I'm not looking after myself or maybe there's other things going on that I need to address. But, you know, stop giving your power to someone else. Stop looking for somebody to fix you. You can heal yourself. There's a great book by Louise Hay, you, you Can Heal Your Life. You do it, you know. And everyone's like, Louise Hay's amazing, which she is. But she teaches people to heal themselves by following and doing the exercises and that. You are taking your power. And it's the same with your weight. The program doesn't lose weight for you. You do it by doing the steps, by doing the work, by committing. And, you know, if that's something that you struggle with, committing, staying in the room, asking the hard questions, all that sort of stuff, I do run a program, a group program called Why Wait. We meet up four times a month 
you, there's no pressure to come live. Everything's recorded. You can ask any questions beforehand. You can watch the recording afterwards. I encourage you to come live. We journal together and we go into this mindset stuff like, hey, this happened. Um, you know, and we look at what triggered it. Like, you know, did I not eat enough this morning? Um, is, when somebody is annoying me, is that equal food? Or have I made a habit of I sit down in the evening and I eat food? Like, and how do I break these habits and how do I instill new ones? But it's not quick. I'm not going to lie to you. It's not fast. It's not magic. It's, it's, as I say, I don't really like the term hard. It's work, but it can still be fun. We have heaps of fun in our group. We have jokes. And, you know, we make this a whole inclusive journey because the thing is, if you put your life on hold or drop weight, like people who go into the biggest loser house, when you come back to your responsibilities, your job, your children, your housework, all that sort of stuff, the weight comes back on because transformation doesn't happen in a vacuum. The way that you drop the weight is the way that you'll keep it off. It doesn't have to take over your whole life. You can put aside a little bit of time each day, uh, most days of the week to do something. Anyway, if you'd like to know more, please comment below, ask me any questions. Um, yeah, I hope this has been helpful. Thanks, everybody. Bye.